It is the Anfield Rapids, Neil Atkinson with you, uh, joined by Beth Linda, by Ian Salmon and by John Gibbons. Uh, coming up are the Euros, we're not going to talk about that on this show, it's not our remit, we might touch on them when it's relevant to Liverpool, but you can watch the Euros in any one of 900 Green King sports clubs right the way across the country. Uh, you may want to sign up uh, to the any one of the many social channels that they've got, competitions and giveaways galore all the way through. We always say that football is more than a game, Green King think the same thing, they also think football's better enjoyed when it is social we very much think that at the Anfield app because good god what else would we be doing we'd be out of business if we weren't careful so uh, get yourself down to a Green King pub for the Euros over the course of the competition um Today is I don't I refuse to believe it's Arnold Slot's first day in work in any any real sense, in that I suspect he was working when he wasn't officially working at Liverpool Beth. Uh, I suspect he also didn't say Saturday then first day off, lucky me. Uh, if that's also the case, I suspect he's very, very keyed up. And what I want to get into here is his to-do list, the Michael Edwards, Richard Hughes to-do list, the squads. Uh, all of that sort of stuff, everything that needs assessing moving forward from this point. Uh, let's almost pretend it is day one, but what's been striking so far over the course of this summer is how many striking links and questions there are to right wingers. Uh, in Bueno, queued us over the weekend. Elise has been long standing. Bakayoko is in there as well. Should we read? Well, what, what do you read? Should we read anything into this? I mean, I think it's one of those, isn't it? I think Salah at this moment in time looks likely to to stay. Um, certainly his post that he, he made on Instagram toward the end of the season indicates that he's probably got a view to being here at least one more year, whether he extends or not. Now, if he decides he doesn't want to extend, then that maybe there's some difficult conversations for the club to have in terms of not wanting to let a, a player of his calibre go on a free transfer next summer. Um, I'd quite like if he does stay to to see what he'd be like down the middle. Um, I think he, toward the, the, the back end of last season, he looked like he was isolated a little bit, I thought, out on the right. And just made me think a little bit of, of Sadio Mane in, in his final season at the club. And the first half of that season, he looked like he was struggling a little bit to really get into the game. And then he gets moved into the sort of the false nine position and he just excels in that. And he's banging in the goals as Liverpool are sort of chasing a quadruple. So I'd be intrigued to see what Salah would do there, in which case then you've got a space out on the right wing. Even if you keep him there, you, you'd imagine you need a, a sort of a long-term successor. Um, so, yeah, I think it, it makes sense that Liverpool have been linked to all of these players. I don't know whether there's any sort of truth in any of them. I think Kudus has had an excellent season, but, um, you know, it's one season, isn't it? So you've got to consider the price tag that he would command. Is it worth sort of gambling big money? And Buemo as well, his player I really like. He's had a, had a couple of injuries, hasn't he, the last couple of seasons? Last season, yeah, he gets last, a bad knock. Last season, he, he had a bad knock, bad knock and he was out for a while. Elise, really like, but very injury-prone player. And the way that, that Liverpool are with injuries I sort of think is it a good idea signing a player who's already spent an awful lot of time on the sidelines um, so yeah I don't know whether there's any truth in any of them um, but I suppose it makes sense with the seller with his future up in the air a little bit to, to look at options I'm going to be drilling into the way Slot played last season uh, on a couple of videos with Josh Williams in the next uh, week or so John they'll be coming out on the Anfield wrap uh, on uh, the app and, and YouTube the I think I, th- I think four two three one is these days it's almost the slippery slipperiest version of events as to how you want a team to play. David Moyes would have argued he played four two three one when he had Mikel Arteta on one flank, Stephen Pienaar on the other, and Tim Cahill behind Marcus Bent. Uh, he just said that was a four two three one. Alternatively, there's times when you look at some of the shapes of slots four two three ones, and it looks very much like a four two four. Liverpool under Klopp at times played four two three one more than people think. Certainly pre pandemic, more than people think, or even during it. I, th- I find the the sort of the language around this, it's such a movable feast is what I'm saying. And that's what makes it difficult. We, you know, Beth says there about Salah down the middle. I'll ask her in a minute, but do you mean nine? Do you mean 10? What is it that we're thinking there? You know, and I think that that still remains almost the key question around every transfer link. Yeah, I think as well, you know, the example you don't use, but is probably the, the most pertinent for Liverpool fans is, is under Rafa. And, and that was a very 4 2 3 1. Like it was almost like a Sabutio table. Uh, Rafa's 4 2 3 1. They were, they were so, it was so for banks and, and it was so sort of structured. And it was obviously all built around at its best. Uh, Gerard is in that attacking midfield role and Fernando Torres. And everyone was sort of built around that really. And UI players. You know, we're, we're sort of servicing them, but 
But so that's the forty-three one that we've seen the most, you know, with yeah. our eyes. And so you sort sort of, you know, you think, well, I, I very much know what a forty-three one is, and and the pros and cons sort of around that. Whereas, like you say, I, like you say, it is, I think, very much di- di- dictated by your wide players and, and what you're asking them to do and how attacking they are, and also, you know, what what foot they kick with in a really sort of basic way, you know. So you know. It, it, you know, Albert Vieira played forty three one very differently from from Sozzi Yossi Benayoun and 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 so it's it, it's important it, also to remember that John that for three months Yossi Benayoun was the best player on the planet. Well, well he was, yeah. So we, 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 we I mean I'll, I'll scratch that we built a team quite rightly around him. <laughs> um but I think um, I think what you're asking those wide players to do is just does 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 sort of change things a little bit and, and, and I guess what kind of ten you've got as well because it's unlikely we're gonna have one sort of quite like Steven Gerrard because I don't think there's loads of them about and and so yeah, um it, it might it might be I think formations I don't think managers are as bothered about formations as, as what fans are. I think I think obviously there is some exceptions. I think you know the, the you know, and I think defensively, I think it makes a bit of a difference. Certainly, when you look at Amu and free at the back, I think I think that was you know a sort of a defined thing, if you like. But I think I think for managers, they a they, like you pointed out, they probably change a little bit more. You know, match to match to to or, or even during a match to, than what people think. But also, you know, they're much more interested in what is it you're asking the players to do. And I think actually, when you look at you know, um, sites like Statsbomb that we get access to and, and and stuff like that. You know, often there's a there's a two at the back and there's a one up front, and everyone else is basically playing midfield. And I think most modern teams, certainly ones that are at the top of leagues, effectively playing two seven one. Is that enough players? Yeah, yeah. two two seven one is what they're doing. Um, and what you got the seven doing is the interesting thing. And this is it's key to the whole the whole shebang here, Ian, because you know, in terms of what Liverpool's where Liverpool's squad is, I think it's you know, in terms of the moves that do or don't need to be made in the summer, I think just having a sense, almost to John's point there, as to what he wants the seven doing, looks to me like it's the it's the key question. You know, where ultimately where will Salah feature? Where will Sabah's life feature? Where you know it's a sort of where would Harvey Elliott feature? What's what what there? Um, and then obviously there's the constant question around Alexander Arnold. You know these are the sort of the the moving parts in amongst all of this. Not least because the players I've mentioned themselves, I think look to be genuinely quite multifunctional. So how you're sort of building that squad and what's happening with transfers, I think that's the that's almost the criminology of it all. Yeah, I, I think the. Um Jürgen came out a few times and pointed out they didn't believe in formations. Formation is how you set up at the beginning of the game and the only time you're playing formation is the beginning of the game and everything else is about roles and structure and the, the actual movement you want to get into the team. So I think, you know, if we're talking 4 2 three, one, then I think that very quickly becomes a three five two or three one four two, depending on what your, your double pivot sixes are playing. And I think everything that we do is going to be down to two conversations. It's going to be a conversation with Trent about what he wants and what how he's going to be used in a conversation with Mo about what he wants now he's going to be used and that's the sensible way to manage the two of them and find out what two of your very senior players want to do with their career um, you know there's obviously there's a lot of links with, between Trent and Rail at the moment and you're looking at Rail's midfield and going I'm not sure you're actually getting to the midfield at Rail you'll probably end up playing right back there because that's what they're going to need next season the season after so what do you actually want to do because you've probably got more chance of stamping yourself as one of the world's best midfielders at Liverpool than you have Rail at the moment um, in which case if you're looking at it as a, a, he's playing in a two then whoever you bring in to sit alongside him or whoever you use to sit alongside him is going to be the guy that drops a bit deeper anyway so everything works around that and we know the Slot has tended to like his fullbacks to press forward. So it's not about fullbacks playing the way they played for us about three years ago. I think everything else builds around there. And with Beth, I, I love the idea of seeing Mo down the middle, I think as, an, as a nine, basically, mm. just to have him as the actual spear point of the attack and the lads. Because I think the last game of the season, I think, was the sharpest we've seen Mo since he came back from AFCON. He looked like his movement was there. He looked like his, his actual reaction was there all the time. But I think his movements from out to the centre of the box has to be more limited than it was five years ago because he's five years older so you know and he's had a leg injury for the first time in his career so if you're going to facilitate him being the best version of himself I think you move him to the centre now I think it's 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 doing what they did with Ronaldo isn't it and just put them in the middle and go just score goals I think as soon as you've had that conversation then you know what else you need to build I think 
interesting we saw a couple of times towards the end of the season that Sir Bosley was brought on as a sub in the left-hand side of the front three. And that could be somewhere you look at because I think he's, he's done that for Hungary, hasn't he? He's, he's certainly played on the I left. I think he's moved all over for Hungary, yeah. really, the grand scheme. So if you look at that and go, well, he's a factor for the left of the front three. Just with the players we've got at the moment, we have people who can play those. It might be if you're talking about Mo at the front, then Harvey Elliott is perfect for the right of the three in that shape. More so than he's been for the right of a front three so far. That's probably exactly where you need Harvey Elliott and kind of in that little pocket, just slightly in from the right. So I, th- I think we've got a lot of players who can play a 4 2 3 so- Three one system. The only thing we're missing is a very orthodox, very high class number six. It's it's interesting to me. You know, you're talking about formations and how they can look different things and how easily a four four two can change to really a four two three one. And and you know, people act like it was it was it was four four two forever in English football and, and until um, you know the the foreign managers came over basically and brought these these new lines uh, to the game and stuff like that. But if you actually look at what traditional English teams did, you know they had the striker and then they had someone playing off them. Um, so Tosh and Keegan, yeah. Or, or you know if you look at the England team, you know it, it was it was Lineker and then Peter Beardsley and, and stuff like that, and then. So if you think, well, you've got two strikers, but one of them is dropping off and playing a little bit deeper. And then you think, well, you've got four midfielders, but, but generally your wingers are getting forward more than your central midfielders are. Well, then suddenly it's 4-2-3-1. And I think so he might he might look at this and go, well, I like 4 3 one but I've got a lot of strikers. I've got a lot of people who, who I want to get centrally. He might end up picking something that looks more like a 4-4-2 on paper when it's sort of written down, but he's quite happy that we'll end, it will turn into a, a 4 2 3 one by the fact of, of who he's picking. Do you know what I mean? So, for example, if, you, if you're picking Jota and Salah, well, Jota's coming deeper to get the ball, and, yeah. and Salah's looking to play on the on, on the shoulder, um, similar to sort of Darwin, you know, so whoever, you know, Gakpo is is, is, is is dropping deeper, you know, whoever you're picking, you know, suddenly sort of ends up playing that. And if you're picking, you know, Elliot and, and, and Diaz in midfield in, in those wide areas in a 4 4 2. You're not telling me that when you look at the heat maps, they're not further forward than, you know, McAllister and Jones, for example. You know, and so, so it ends up sort of looking like that anyway. And I, so I, this is what I mean about managers sort of being a bit relaxed about it rather than being, you know, regimented because football, you know, depending on who you're picking these formations, you know, it can end up looking like something else anyway. Well, we did we did a show years ago now um, where we watched back the FA Cup final from 1974. And the 1974 Liverpool team played like Klopp's team. There's nothing new in these things. It's it's not it's not a change of formation. It's not a change of system. It's just getting the best out of each player for what their talents actually are. As you've just been saying. I think that is the central thing for Slot. One of his first bits of business. I mean, obviously the players are all away now on holiday or on international duty. But is before obviously they'll be assessing transfer targets. But it's also about assessing where the current crop of players feel most comfortable playing, where they would like to play, where they can play. Um, and like Ian said earlier on, I think that is central because, you know, you, you want to be buying players who are going to fit into this new system. And if you've got players currently who feel like they can play, you know, maybe somewhere slightly different to where they've already played previously, I think, you know, that's something that he needs to work out. Is that though, so that the key question of that though, Beth, is do you do that through video? Do you do that through talking to them? Do you do that through first week, first two, three weeks to get them in training? Because there is a little bit of a ticking clock here. You know, the Euros are on the way. Um, I think anyway, the transfer market to me looks like it's going to be a bit of a funny summer between who's got money, who hasn't, who's got PSR wiggle room, who hasn't, what, who moves first where. Uh, you know, I think it's going to be quite complicated because valuations for players, I think, is difficult. So, in amongst all of this, there was interesting. Paul Gorse wrote something that came out this morning where he talked about release clauses that Liverpool may well be back into the realm of release clauses. I think Liverpool like release clauses, but I think there's a problem, isn't well, not a problem, but I think that if to the idea of slots first month of business. Precisely, how do you do that? What's the what's the plan? What's the strategy behind that? Are you using the data, the videos, the conversations, or are you waiting to see them? It's such a difficult one, isn't it? I think, as you say, I think he's probably started to lay some of that groundwork before he's fully assumed the role. I think the certain players, the likes of Trent, for example, the likes of Mo, who that needs to be done via a conversation. Um, I think, you know, Trent in particular, is, I think, sees himself now as a midfielder. I really do. And I think, you know, if, he, if that's what he's hell-bent on doing, then you've got to either accommodate him or say, well, right, well, 
we, we don't see you as a midfielder and then he has to make his own decision there. So I think for players like, like Trent, for, like Mo, the big hit is within the team. You've got to maybe have that conversation personally. For the rest of them, maybe it is about video analysis, but it is so difficult. Obviously, you've got a major tournament this summer as well. You've got players who... I'm a Copa America, not just the Euros. Yeah, exactly. You've got players who will catch the eye of, you know, potential other rivals this summer players who might have an excellent tournament who you weren't expecting new targets emerging so it is so difficult I'm glad I'm not a football manager and I you know I don't have to deal with all of this but um, it is tough because like you say you don't want to get to the end of the summer and then you, you against a race against time to to get your targets in the the other thing that's coming through uh, John and, and again it's I think it is I think it almost has to be interlinked into the 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 trend Alexander Arnold aspect. There's noises around holding midfielders, but the the sort of thing that's at least coming from from a couple of the people who cover Liverpool is that the noises are that the they're, they're always looking for someone who can play in that role. But at the minute, not much seems likely. As a supporter base, I'm going to say pretty much since 2005, Liverpool supporters have absolutely fetishised holding midfielders like a gang of absolute like we're, we're, we are, we love them. We absolutely love them. Uh, we're, we're all in on them at all times. Um, I'm sort of of the view some people might have to be prepared for disappointment <laughs> over the course of this summer. I just am. Yeah, and the <laughs> the, the, the the comfort, I guess, if 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 people want it, is is that we're not alone on that. I remember last summer we played Bayern Munich in in Singapore, and me and Craig went out, and all the Bayern journalists were talking about was was defensive midfielders, and we went to Tuchel's press conference just because fucking why not? And um, he was like, yeah, you I know you all wanted a defensive midfielder, but I can't find one. Yeah, there's none there. Get me one. We were buying, and then he ended up with Eric Dyer, and 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 then he ends up playing centre half, and I think that actually does okay. But you know they're in the sort of similar situation, so this isn't the 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 Liverpool in um, pre pre Virgil Van Dijk who who've decided there's no centre halves uh, better than Lovren. This is kind of everyone saying it really, and this is why you know Casido went for the money he he did. This is why the the they'll never truly give up to give up on Chua Many. Uh, but it seems, but he's given his boots to Liverpool fans, so that's a good sign. Do you see that? Yeah, that was did, cool, yeah. wasn't it? Um, and so, like, you know, it's 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 sometimes people turn into. It, Positions turn into a bit of a premium, and, and it's cyclical. Um, like I, we we did the transfer committee game, and it was it was quite interesting to do from a point of view of just seeing, just learning for me, seeing what's out there. There's loads of good young centre halves, isn't there? All the ones I was looking at, I was looking into them and going, "Oh, he looks good." And, yeah. and this is there's quite a lot of of good young centre halves looking around. Whereas it felt like ten years ago, you were like, "Where's all the centre halves?" Do you know what I mean? And so and so it, it just sort of happens like that sometimes. Football and and you know for, for a variety of reasons, you know, we, there's loads we, of interesting pacey lads who play on flanks. Yeah, 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 and so. And so, and so, and I'm sure there's, there's, there's a rhyme and reason for it, but but the reality is that this this is sort of what we're in, and so I think, you know, Liverpool will probably think, well, you know, what 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 combination of skills do we need the midfield, and how how do we fit that with either what we've got or or by sort of supplementing that, but but like you say, the the out and out defence in midfield. Uh, I don't, I don't see coming in because I don't really see who it is. We spoke about that a little bit last week on, on the gutter because some of the lads were saying, you know, we want a number six and we need to get a number six. And I, I completely get that and that frustration and that desire to, to have a real, have a Rodri regen come in. But, you know, we've spoke, we spoke before about how, you know, Liverpool aren't afraid to spend big money on a player when they feel like that is their player, when they feel like that's my man and he's going to come in and make this team better, then they'll spend that money. We saw them put that bid in for Caicedo last summer. And so I think if there was someone out there and it was a number six who could come in and, and could be the next Rodri, could be the next Declan Rice, then they would they would pay that money but I just don't think like John said I just don't think that player is out there so it's a question of do you bring in a player with potential who could develop into that do you bring in a player who's maybe more experienced an endo type who can do a job do you stick with what you've already got and try and mould them into into a, a good enough six to be able to play you know alongside someone else and hold in midfield so I, I just think it is you know, I know people get frustrated with transfers, but I think the club do need to be given a little bit of a break in that sense with the number six thing because I do think there is a bit of a dearth of real high quality sixes at the moment. In terms of what we fetishise as well, Neil, you you talking about it? I think, and it came up again on the Facebook subscribers group, the, the, the Anfield Rap one, which I go on quite a bit. People saying, oh, you know, where we had Mascarano and Mar- Mar- Alonso and stuff like that, and you know, it goes back to the Rafa forty three one, and you know, I was. 
<laughs> I pointed out that that team didn't win anything. Do you know what I mean? And so we talk about it being like, you know, oh, the, you know, the, the best midfield in the world and stuff like that. And listen, they were great, but you know, and they were really hard to beat, but they were arguably a bit too hard to beat. Do you know what I mean? Because if you if often you, an attack a light. Exactly, yeah, hundred percent. And so, you know, we had this great base, we had a, a really good defence, we had a really good goalkeeper, then we had Mascarano and Alon. So and I remember a couple of people I remember one, Wayne Gordon to give him a shout he was saying to me like we don't need both of them in all these games and I'm like oh yeah but it's great you know we look at the sort of the basic games so I look back he was probably right Wayne if you're listening well it, uh, I'll, let you win, <laughs> I'll let you win that argument 15 years on because um, because you know you, you don't you know you the, the teams that you're looking to beat you know what I mean and, and then you, you know you play if we're playing this 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 amazing six alongside Alexis McAllister, for example, you know, like is is that a bit overkill? Do you know what I mean? In 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 sort of all these games, or, or are you better having you know a few lads who can do a little bit of everything? I don't know. I think I think this is where it fits in if you intend that six to drop back into the the back two and split in the way Fabinho we used to split the central defenders. If that's what you're going to use your six for, then you're talking about a back three, basically, aren't you? But Fabino was also playing in a three, though, wasn't it? Where, where I think like a six does make a little bit more sense because Fabino, who was who was who was a great passer and and, and also you know could knock in a, a goal or two, you know he's a more expansive player than say a Mascherano, but but he's also <coughs> sort of playing in a three, wasn't he? And so I think there, I think a six is a bit more important because you you effectively have one sitting and two going, don't you? Or know, you can flip the triangle and, but, and but all if, that. But we're stuff. talking about the fact the formations basically don't really matter. Then that one. Just gives Trent, if it is Trent, mm. the basis to just. But you just dropped McAllister. Um, I could be playing McAllister as a ten, and I know you're not into the idea of McAllister as a ten. But I, I think I think I think, I think uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I think that that and that comes back to, and this is why this is like it's a difficult conversation until you see them play a couple of preseason games because I think if your number ten doesn't have a ton of pace and can't play with his back to goal. Then you've you, you can be creating a couple of problems for yourself down the line. And then it's four three three. And yeah. then it's and then it, it, it is it's back to. Yeah. But also at times he played last season a final that's understated. I've, I've got some stuff through from stats bomb and he, he does play four three three a bit more than everyone said it's four two three one. But he does sometimes where it looks and it shapes up like it's four three three, and that's why I think it is. It's always a movable feast. There's times when you look at the, the maps and it just looks bang on like there's four forwards on the pitch there. They're all right the way up there. Uh, just as a, an interesting point on uh, Schlotz fighting odd last season, um, they didn't beat either of the sides that finished first or third uh, they got beat at home by PSV uh, drew 2-2 two, two away they uh, drew 0-0 nil, nil with 20 at home they uh, got beat 2-1 away by them uh, there's only 18 teams in the league the team from the teams that finished 4 to 18th uh, they only dropped points with draws in four of the games they won every other match uh, knew how to beat the teams uh, that were not at the top of the table moving on then Ian and this is part of it really is that who are you worried about doesn't fit because this is where I think this again, you know, Liverpool Liverpool do like to move players on. You know, I don't want to necessarily talk about lads who are out on loan or anything like that. But instead that idea of, you know, within there, there's been a couple of defenders linked away, Vandenberg, Canate, a two being linked away, Canate sort of talked that down, but he does only have two years left in his contract. Keller has making noises like he'd like to be a number one, uh, which makes sense from his point of view, but it might not from Liverpool's in general, is there anyone you worry doesn't particularly fit, or do you think again this is they'll all fit one way or another once the manager's got hold of them? I think there may be a case of people don't fit numerically for the three. So <laughs> you look at it, who who we've got to complain the three, and there's probably about ten people that can play there. So that point you're talking about who is um, actually superfluous to your needs uh, rather than not fitting. Who is just one too many and you can't fulfil their game time. I've got a feeling about Gravenberg. I don't know why, because he's shown flashes of looking really good. And as a Dutch player, Slot will know his, his work better than most. That could be a good thing and a bad thing, though. It depends how yeah, good your work is. <laughs> I, just, I just don't like know. Like the old clean slate theory. Yeah. I don't want a clean slate. Yeah, I like yeah. my slate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've got a great slate. <laughs> so I think, I think everybody's got a chance to impress. I, mean, I think one of the players they could actually be the making of is Carvalho. He could be exactly what he's looking for within that, that sitting behind. He, he could be, and he is, that is a, definitely a clean slate with a new manager because it did appear like there was a thing that Klopp just didn't fancy him. So it could be that he's got a chance as a player who's now two years older than he was when he came in and has had a decent season out on loan. He could have a chance to show something. He could actually become the player we thought we might be getting in the first place. Who are you or he doesn't fit? Anyone? 
it's so hard because I think until you've seen them under the new manager in whatever formation he decides to play, which obviously does look like it's going to be 4-2-3-1, it's hard to, to judge. I think Graven Birch is one just because he's, you know, we don't really know what he's brilliant at yet. We've seen flashes of him being, you know, he scores an absolute world he didn't he against Fulham. and um, But I don't think we've seen enough of his brilliance to know long term where he's where he's going to excel the most um i think gakpo i'm i'm excited actually to see gakpo on the slot i think you know having a dutch manager he's a player that i really really like gakpo he got a lot of flat last season and rightly so at times you know he underperformed a little bit but you know he, he's one of those players that hasn't really been given a chance in his favoured position. So again, it'll be interesting to see where the new manager sees him. Is it, you know, on, on the left-hand side of that three? You know, is it more further forward? Is it, you know, could, could Gakpo play in the 10? I don't know. So um, there's no one that I'm necessarily like, they need to go. There's no way they're going to fit this new manager, but it will be interesting because it does feel like we've maybe gonna, we're going to have maybe a little bit of a surplus in a certain area of the pitch. And that is those players who can play both in midfield and out on the wing and, yeah, I, I think there will be some big, potentially tough decisions for the manager to make. Yeah, it's the Grand Bay one's interesting because obviously at Bayern it was a case of well he doesn't fit into how we play and I'm always tiny bit suspicious when when that's the case because you're like well I always feel like the good players would fit in anywhere, you know. You can't imagine, you know, someone saying like, "Oh, you know, just don't want to know what to do with Steven Gerrard." Do you know what I mean? Like uh, that's an extreme example. Obviously, he's one of the, you know, the best players in the club's history. But you know, you, you'll always find, that, you know, no matter what formation you you play, if the, if the player's clever and he's and he's got good skills, you, you know, you'll always sort of find a place for him. He feels to me like a very much a midfield free player, Gravenberg. And if we're not going to play like that, then I think he needs to sort of develop a couple of things quickly if he's going to work in that too and I don't see him as a fun free I think it's a big year for Sabaslai and that I think if he can't nail down that 10 if we if it is 4-2-3-1 if he can't sort of nail down that 10 then um, you know and, and, and do that really well then I think I think for him he might start getting a bit sort of fed up really I don't think he's the type of player he wants to be in and out I don't think he enjoyed it um, I think he's he he's I think he he wants to to be the man type thing. I think he's that, that sort of suits him. I think I think the, the Hungary system and, and him being like the, the main fella. I think certain players sort of like that, and I think I think he's he's one of them. And, and I, thought, I think at his best, he's too good to be in and out. You know, if he yeah. can if he can sort of manage to rediscover some of that form from the first half of the season, then you want him. He's one of the first names on the team. Yeah, hundred percent. And, and, and listen, I'm not I'm not saying it's definitely not going to happen for him. I'm just saying it, I think I think it is a big season for him. But but you know, it's 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 a big season for everyone, and and certainly some of the lads who are who are a bit newer to the team. You think. <laughs> Van der Berg, though, is interesting, John. Um, Canate, as I say, I'll say again, he's only got two years left. That used to be the time when it was decision decision time get around a player. Being a little bit less that in Liverpool, and I think at other clubs across the last few seasons, Matip's gone. I mean, in one sense, it seems a good time to move people on. Um, but in another, it is not unreasonable for everyone on both sides of this conversation to want to do a couple of weeks with the new fella. But if, you know, you you are making a break, I think, you know, Shimakas has had however many seasons now as, as as a cover left back, you'd think at some point he might want to go on and, and be a first choice left back somewhere else for himself. You know, you, I, I don't think it takes... I don't think it takes a massive leap of imagination to actually be able to envisage five, six outs of players who are at least on Liverpool's books, even if they weren't in Liverpool's first team. Yeah, I think I don't think there'll be any big names go this summer. I'd be surprised. Not unless, you know, there's, there's a chain of events around the contract or something like that, and then a big offer comes in for someone who who, who is resolutely not, not signed. And um, I think... I don't think there'll be any big names. I think it is the squad players who who, who will be interested and have got sorts of decisions to make. But obviously for them, you know, there's something around Diaz. There's been a fair bit of noise about no, it for a while. No, I'd, I'd, I'd be shocked if Diaz is in a Liverpool player next season. And 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 similar for for Canati, who I know you talked about on the, on the Gutter show, and it was an interesting chat. And I didn't realise he had two years left for it, for example. But I just think I just think for there's a lot to do this summer, and I think. 
I think they'll probably make the decision that they don't sort of want to create more. I think they'll try and get Kelleher to hang on another year if they can. Do you know what I mean? Which which seems a little bit harsh, but I think you know. I mean, maybe they'll decide look look at getting us another subkeeper in and maybe making a bit of money. You know, wouldn't be wouldn't be the end of the world. You know, in terms of workload, but but I think in terms of like first team players, I think they'll be looking to to add and and, and supplement and, and maybe change. But I think a few around, you know. People around the squad who, who they feel like they can get decent money for, and you know they think, well, he wants to move on, and fair enough. Then I think that's fine. I think that I found the Seb Van der Veg thing like a bit a bit mad. To be honest with you, I can't believe how much stick he was getting online. Someone was saying like, oh, he's burns his bridges. Like I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure he's got any bridges. I think that I think that's the point. That's almost his point. His point. Yeah, yeah. I've, had, I've had no bridges. Yeah, there's, there's no bridges to burn. I, 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 you know, the, 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 I know others say, well, he fucking signed that contract when he was 19. Do you know what I mean? And, and I was like, well, yeah, do you know what I mean? It feels like, you know, imagine going to uni and then going, oh, it's not for me. I want to drop out to so someone. Like, well, you've committed three years now, lads. <laughs> we, we want your tuition fees. Do you know, it's like, like it's the fucking kids trying their best. Do you know what I mean? Like, and, and you know, I've, I've, I've heard the, com- the conversation uh, on the guts of again on Seth Vandenberg was really good, but it did make me laugh to you. I called him naive and I was like, I think he's actually the opposite. I think he's going, I know how good I am, lads. I'm, 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 I'm mine's good. Yeah. Can you, can you let me go and pay for mine's? I, I yeah. think Seth's, Seth's the only player at the club who doesn't want a week with a new guy <laughs> <laughs> yeah no, I, th- I, th- I think he also knows I don't even know he's got a house uh, well we can't have yeah yeah yeah, he's, he's he's in an Airbnb. Yeah. If when he comes back for that first week of exactly. training, I don't even think he's got anywhere to live. He's, he's, he's stuck in Jordan's to... lift. <laughs> <laughs> really niche joke, but I laughed. Um, I feel like he, he just wants to go and be a footballer somewhere, and he's like, F- I'm, I'm not. Uh, yeah, I'm not that good. Do you know? You're not going to get twenty million for me. I, I basically I head it and I clear it. Yeah, and I yeah. don't want to do anything else. I head it, I clear yeah. it. That's yeah. that, that's me. Yeah, it comes near me. It goes somewhere <laughs> else. And I can, I, I can play first team football for the next decade doing that because we're plenty of places to do it. Everton, as an example. <laughs> And then he, he, he might be looking for another centre half. Then. Yeah, and then they might also be looking for another centre half at some point Brand in the near wait, future. Vandenberg swap deal, I reckon. No, I mean, that sounds absolutely picture perfect as far as everyone's concerned. Matip has gone. It's worth, you know, Tiago has gone as well. Beth, I think it is worth sort of marking that and being aware that it doesn't quite. Well, I think it does leave a gap at least in one instance. Uh, but you know, Liverpool. Liverpool will need... There's got to be some squad churn. I take John's general point, but I think there has to be some squad churn. And I think it is... I think For me, I think it is a good opportunity if there's question marks or doubts that have been had about a couple of players to maybe just look at saying, even if it is just a lads on loan, but look at sort of saying we're going into a new phase of that. Because someone like Bobby Clark might need a loan as well. You know, what are you doing with Owen Beck? I think you've sort of got to make a decision one way or another. He's either part of it or he isn't. I do think that this stuff does need to be moved on. Yeah, definitely. I think we saw so many young lads get a little bit of an opportunity in the second half of last season, Bobby Clark being one of them, James McConnell. You know, some of those players, you've got to think, well, are they going to stick around? Are they going to be given a chance? And I think they are the sort of players that will want a couple of weeks with the new manager. Um, And he should want want that with them. Yeah, and I'm sure he will, because I think all of those players that came up have shown flashes of, of what they can be. But, you know, they are young. And I think at that stage of your career, you need to be playing more often than not. And so maybe it is with the likes of Bobby Clark that alone a loan spell even just you know six months to, to January and then reassess it is, is maybe something that would be worth looking into. Um, I think Kelleher is a really interesting one because I, I am I'm concerned about Allison. Um, he's the best in the world absolutely uh, when he's fully fit. He gets injured an awful lot for a goalkeeper and it's not just one season it's nearly every season that he's been at the club he's missed games through injury. Um, and he's had a couple of lengthy layoffs through injury as well. He's getting older, so you think, well, will those sort of muscle injuries that you know, like the one he picked up last season, will that keep reoccurring? Um, and I think because of how injury prone he is for a goalkeeper, you need to have a very good number two. You can't you can't get away with having an Adrian, for example, um, who you know he might be a bit of a cult hero, but you would not want him thrown in in, in a Premier League game if you're trying to win trophies. So. You need a very good number two. It can't just be a passable one. It needs to be someone who can come in and, and can do a job. And Kelleher is that is more than that. Um, and from a human perspective, I think Kelleher should leave. And I think he deserves a chance to go and be number one week in, week out. But then it leaves Liverpool with a dilemma because 
number two goalkeepers are very hard to come by. It's like Ortega at City, isn't it? I think he could be a number one somewhere else and he has played a fair bit. Obviously, Edison's had a couple of injuries as well. Um, So that is a real dilemma for the club, I think, deciding what they do with him and it probably depends who else is out there that they can bring in. I I would be doing everything I can to hang on to Keller because exactly as Beth just said, um, Alisson does get injuries. And you need quality to come in. So it's not a case, as John was saying before, yeah, we, we could do a quick just get another sub goalie. We can't. We need somebody very specifically very good to be able to play the game in exactly the same way. Kelleher is the best available to us, and I'd be trying to hold on to him. Um, with the other young players, Ian, I'm going to inc- include Quanston Bradley in this. You know, there's prospects all the way down there. I've mentioned Beck as well. There's Dan's. We'll be looking to come back in in pre-season and grab the eye. You can even go back to 12 months ago. We were all exceptionally excited about Ben Doak and the Europa League. And in two different ways, it didn't really come to pass. The performance has never hit and then he was injury hit. Um, we'll sort of start with Quanser and Bradley. Um, Quanser's done well enough to end up getting called up uh, to the England squad, at least the preliminary squad for the Euros. Bradley is Northern Ireland's best player. Uh, already as it Carson goes all the way through uh, well I, I, you say that John uh, <laughs> uh, there's talk that Bradley's got two functioning knees um, there is you know within that though if you're Bradley the, the, the next part of that conversation though, and this is why this again is there's all these moving parts for Slot Hughes Edwards to be on top of because if you're Bradley one of the first things you're saying is well what's what's the fellow who wears number 66 doing yeah. what's his plan because <laughs> I could do know what's going on there before I work out before we work out how much football I can reasonably expect next season well I, I think that's massive I think that makes it makes sense to move Trent into the midfield because we've got a right back who can do the job that Trent was doing five years ago and he's an, ex, he's an absolutely excellent right back he, who's playing yeah, right back when he isn't when he isn't well I think this is where we need to either buy a decent backup or the the link to Hertruda is is an interesting one. But he's not can, coming to be second choice, is he? No, but he can play right centre back as well. So he, he can play the two positions. So you get that chance of actually rotating them on a decent level. Then, so I, I don't want to see Gomez filling in as a right back anymore. I want to see Gomez as part of the centre back conversation okay. permanently. Um, so I think you know Calvin Ramsey still exists apparently. He does, he does, he does. But I'm, fitness I'm not issues. sure what he's like at all. I, you know, I've never actually seen him. I wouldn't recognise him if he was sat in here. He's not even on my prospects list, to be honest with no. you. He looks like the rest of them. He's 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 thin and he's got that haircut. So yeah, the the, the basic the scouse fringe. Yeah, um, the one you get to a certain age, like I haven't. You just can't do it anymore. Um, Quanson Bradley, I don't even think of as prospects anymore. I think they're part of the first team conversation at all times they, they are in the squad and always will be in the squad I think Bradley is good enough to be our first choice right back if we move Trent into midfield because Trent was our first choice right back at that age and doing that same job um, it, we, it's that, that backup if Calvin Ramsey is good enough to be the backup we're sorted on that but I do like that link to Hertruda because it just it bulks up the squad a little bit and, and answers the centre back as well because we do definitely need another centre back to replace Matip that, that's just absolute fact that um, with it, Beth, though, players like, as I say, Beck in Scotland's top flights team of the year. Dan's um, does excellently for, for two weeks, and it's odd that we don't see a bit more of him. I throw Clark in that category as well. You know, he scores almost a quintessential Jurgen Klopp Liverpool goal against Sparta Prague, sets up another one that's almost a quintessential Liverpool goal, and then I would argue we could have done with a bit more of it at certain games at certain times. I think Clark will. I think if Jurgen Klopp was still manager, I think Clark would be thinking this is the season I become a genuine nailed on first team player. This is one of those ones where to go to the slate point. I think that Bobby Clark doesn't really want a clean slate. I think he'd quite like there to still be Jurgen Klopp there and for him to have that slate. But regardless, he will be thinking, how do I get in this first team? Yeah, I think for a few of those players, it's probably a little bit frustrating that Jurgen's gone because it's like they've done enough to win you know, the old manager over and really sort of established themselves as, as real potential prospects in this team. And then all of a sudden they've got to go all over again and you've got a new manager coming in with new ideas and possibly new transfer targets. So it is an interesting one. It is a big pre-season for those players. Bobby Clark is probably one of the players who it's, it is one of the biggest pre-seasons. And it's interesting because if, if the manager sort of says, right, well, we're, we're going to stick with him and we're not going to sign you know, anyone else in that position, you'll get people criticising and saying, oh, well, Liverpool need to go and sign. And then it's like, well, actually, if you know Bobby Clark was playing every week elsewhere, what level would he be reaching? If Liverpool were then going to spend £50 million on that kind of player, then 
you know, it, it's such a difficult one. So I think it is a massive pre-season. I completely agree with Ian. I think centre-back has to be priority. I think last summer that was something that needed addressing and we didn't really address it. Um, you've got Van Dijk and Kwanzaa as, as your two reliable centre-backs at the moment. Canate can't really be relied upon. I really like him. It obviously, Swan fell off a little bit of a cliff, um, but he's a lot better than what he showed in the second half of the season. But again... Gomez obviously stayed fit most of last season. I actually don't mind Gomez at right back. I, I think he's a very good right back, actually. I think he's obviously, you, you compromise sort of offensively what you've got, um, but I don't mind him doing a job there. Um, but yeah, you definitely need another centre back coming in. So yeah, a lot of big decisions to make. It is interesting the summer, isn't it? Because of the international tournaments. And so you've got the Euros, you've got. Um, Copa America that's happening as well and then there's a, a bit of an Olympics diddle kind of thrown in there too and I can't so really to that at the minute, John. no I know I know so I'm sorry I brought it up to be honest with you but 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 there we are um so you know you're talking about the Beth pre-season being a, a an opportunity for the likes of Clark I'd argue it's even more of an opportunity because there's players that are going to be missing and so that mm-hmm. You know, if there's a preseason game before the America Tour, exactly. But even into the America Tour, there's going to be players missing, and so if you're you're Bobby Clark, there's a real chance there to to impose yourself to show the manager and, and with this famous clean clean slate, the sort of everyone's got. He's you know he's going to be looking at people with fresh eyes and thinking this, this guy's a first team player. Here. This, this guy's a you know a, a, a really talented lad, and, and I want to see something sort of, of him. And, and it's an interesting one for a few of the players, certainly the English lads and the likes of. You know, Curtis Jones and, and Quanta, how they're looking at this this tournament, really, because they've been selected for this for this party, which is brilliant because it's 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 a reward for the hard work and it shows, you know, they're, they're held in highest esteem, sort of nationally as as well as locally. But I'm sure a little bit they're in two minds about whether they want to go or not, because it's kind of like well, you can get picked for an international tournament and isn't that brilliant, but you know, they be they're probably realistic about how much they're likely to play if at all. There's a new manager coming in. Are you better off going to a Euros and, and having that experience, but but not playing, or or or, or you know coming back having having a little bit of a rest, and then you know being there first day, or, or or at least sort of early with with the new manager showing. I think them it would be first day at this point. It's three yeah, weeks yeah. holiday, so if they don't make that England squad, it would be first yeah, day. Yeah, they'll be they'll be there first day, and so I think for for you know Harvey Elliott, to, unless there's a, there's a there's another mad tournament that I don't know about, an under twenty one, just uh, someone saying, oh, there's a, there's an under twenties tournament that Bobby Clark's going to. Unless there's someone like that, it is a real opportunity for those. And say for example, if Curtis Jones does does go away with England, doesn't sort of play at all, it's not. It's not mad to think there's a scenario where suddenly Bobby Clark sort of ends up in front of him in in the, in the situation because he's because he's come in he's sort of shown that and then you know things things can change quite quickly with a new manager so it's it's an interesting one for me really and I don't I've, I you know I've I've used the England players as an example because it's well Doak's got away with Scotland yeah and he's, and he will almost certainly make that squad because he's useful for them for the very reasons why I think he could be useful for for Schlotz mm. you know tons of pace on the right hand side he likes to play supposedly with one of those players in that area. Um, you know, I'm I'm quite. I th- you know I th- I think from Doke's point of view is that he, he I think he'll be made up with the opportunity. Yeah. But the flip side of it is he is potentially going to miss out on the first three months of pre th- three weeks of pre season. Yeah, and that's the thing. And you're missing out, but the other players aren't. And so it's not just it's not just what you're losing; it's what the others are gaining. So you know you've jumped you joined in with Kay Gordon there. If Kay Gordon's absolutely flying, you know what I mean. He's scoring against Berry or whoever we've picked. Yeah. He's coming over there. He's looking very much a first team. Comes player. off the bench against Arsenal. Looks great. Yeah. Then then suddenly. You know, you, you, you're finding yourself, you're playing catch up. You are indeed. The last part of it, Ian, is the contract situation. You know, I think it's been an interesting. Ultimately, I think that I think there's little bits and pieces here. So I think that people thought there'd be a video first day. But let's be clear we can think, we can theorise that Richard Hughes has been working for Liverpool for a few weeks minimum. Michael Edwards has been working for FSG and by extension, therefore, Liverpool, a few weeks minimum. Schlott has had an eye on the Liverpool job at least for sort of four to, to six weeks, not least because he's been talking about it, minimum. And, and had conversations with players in that time. And also done his presentation when he's got the job, which yeah. says what it is, you know, so he's thought about Liverpool, but there's taking the piss. And I think there's a bit of a thing here where I wonder if one of the reasons why there's been a bit of quiet on the, on the contract front is that ultimately whose job has it been to do that? And if they're not in post, then who's sorting all that out? 
And this is where I wonder if that, that situation for all three of the, the lads we're thinking about here, Virgil, Trent, Salah, maybe Canate, if I said before, I think that might move a little quicker now because whilst people might have been doing it, there's the point at which it looks like you're taking the piss. Schlock can't have a video on the 1st of June oh. at 7am because when was he working on the video? Yeah. He, was, he was still on a contract somewhere else at that well, point. When Richard Hughes gave his notice in, in January, didn't he? But was he with Bournemouth till the end of the season? Or was he off on garden and or leave? was he on garden and leave? No then, one said anything. At which point then, and I think that, that a lot and of this... And garden and leave, you can't do any work. Theoretically, but there's a multitude of sins yeah. and there's, there's don't take the piss. Is a thing, I think in most industries is a strong line. Yeah. I think as well, for Michael, you, know, you could say, well, Michael Edwards could have done it. I think Michael Edwards being Sam probably wants Richard Hughes to have his big moment do you know what I mean like I mean this is presuming it is all sorts of there might be sorts of miles away but you know if, the, if the, I think you know what a way to start your first week in the job Richard Hughes he sat there with Trent in a new contract I, th- I think that's what yeah. they'll want well, we, we, would, we were saying we just done obviously done the bacon butty that was excellent wasn't it it was yeah. great wasn't it anybody who hasn't watched this should oh, watch it oh. just the chance of watching me eat toast it's fantastic <laughs> uh, Richard Hughes. Why the Beatles didn't get back? <laughs> it's, it's, it's that good, honest to God. We're doing an eight hour cut of the bacon butty that only lasted half an hour. Uh, it's Rich- Ash going, where's this bacon? <laughs> <laughs> Richard Hughes is now the most powerful man at Liverpool. It's not Michael Edwards, because Michael Edwards is his boss from the bigger organisation. Michael Edwards is FSG. Richard Hughes is a sporting director. So he needs to be seen. Michael Edwards will want him to be seen to be the man who's in charge at Liverpool, because that's his job. So you expect movements on these contracts? Uh, yeah, and, and I am, but also like it's, it's I think it's as much hope as expectation because the, these euros are likely to be a pain in the ass on that as well. So the euro starts two weeks yesterday. Yes, and no, one, fr- Friday. It's the fourteenth of June. It's it's a Friday, so it's even earlier. Even than earlier, that. yeah. So I think, I think if it's nothing's announced before, then I think they'll they'll struggle to announce anything during because Trent won't seem won't want any sort of distractions you know there's 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 enough drama around him in England with without without sort of this Virgil's the captain um Mo I think is 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 obviously you know they can do pretty much any time and and, and they did the last time when he was on holiday do you know what I mean so he's not asked um he's like you taking his laptop and Absolutely. so uh, and so so Mo they can do whenever but I think Trent and Virgil, if they don't announce it before the Euro starts, I think then we'll wait until after. And, and that's not really a nice scenario for, for any of us. So hope and expectation, bit of a mix. I, I don't know which one it is. I think the only one I'm worried about is Trent. Um, I think Virgil, I think it'll be done. I think it was interesting. He, he said a couple of weeks ago that there hadn't been, there wasn't a contract on the table. Um, I think if they put one in front of him and it's you know decent terms, I think he'll sign it. I don't think I can't foresee there being too many issues with Virgil. He, he did say, but I know why. Yeah, so exactly. Yeah, and I, very calm. I think he was relaxed, wasn't he, he? He was very relaxed. He's club captain. He is one of the main men, um, and he's getting to an age where he, he probably can't go and be one of the main men elsewhere. So I, I, I think Virg, I think that'll be sorted. I think Salah. I actually think. You know whether you agree with this or not. I think if you put a contract in front of him and it was the right terms, I think Salah would sign. I think if Salah could decide, I think he'd stay. For I think he'd sign another contract. Um, I don't see him going to Saudi. I really don't. Um, and then it's like, well, where else does he go? Does he go to the states? But again, I still think even next year he'll be what thirty three next. Yeah, I think year? I think he still wants to be playing. Th- I think elite he'll still football. want to be playing elite football, and I think Liverpool is the place where he can do that. Um, so I think Salah will sign if. The, the, if the, the powers that be decide that they want to offer him money, um, I, I think there's a, there's a thing that people miss. Genuinely, just it's, it's an aside, but I think that people miss that Mo Salah really loves playing for Liverpool. Yeah. I yeah. think because he's in lots of ways viewed as inscrutable, <laughs> doesn't do a certain type of interview, so on and so forth. I think people don't think that. I think he absolutely loves playing for Liverpool more than anything. I think he loves playing, and I think every single summer since he's been at the club, pretty much he's been linked with a move away, and he's never really flirted. Yeah. With, with wanting to move away. There was maybe an interview he gave a couple of years ago where he maybe hinted at going to Spain or something like that. But, you know, he's never really flirted, really, you know, Yeah, obviously. not like we've seen from, for instance, players who've eventually either gone on and made a move. Yeah. Or even one or two who ended up staying. And there are other... You can go down Liverpool history lists and go, well, they were... You know, they, they, that, that was what flirting to go away looks like. Yeah. There was more with John Barnes, wasn't yeah. there, in the 80s? You I, don't remember. 
Very yeah. good. <laughs> well, <laughs> Stephen Gerrard. Stephen Gerrard yeah, yeah, gets a lot closer. Yeah, yeah. And I, I actually think it's one it's one sort of aspect of Mo that when he leaves, we'll appreciate more because he is a superstar. He is one of the biggest superstars we've ever had at the club. And how content he's been being here, um, I think is really special, actually. And I think that for that reason, I think he will stay if he, if he gets you know the right terms offered to him. I think Trent is the one I'm concerned about because I think he is more than good enough to go to Real Madrid. Whether you know, as Ian said, whether he gets into that midfield at this moment in time, I don't know. Um, but I think he's got a skill set that any club in Europe would want. Um, and you know there was a lot made of he left a comment on Jude Bellingham's Instagram the other night saying first of however many or whatever and people were taking that as a sign now I don't necessarily think that is I think that was him just congratulating one of his best mates one of his friends yeah um, however I do think that that there's maybe something in the Real Madrid stuff um, so he's the one I'm concerned about and I, I, I can see it dragging into next season Either. I'm 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 the same with all of that basically. I I think Trent is the one. I think Trent's worrying me more because of the way the story is being covered everywhere at the moment, and the, the amount of people talking about him going to Real Madrid seems like a self-fulfilling prophecy. But two years ago, Jude Bellingham coming to us was a self-fulfilled self-fulfilling prophecy that didn't fulfil in any way, shape, or form. So Trent's. Trent, you know, he is he's a scouser. He's born red. He supports the club since he he was able to support a club and he said he wants to be captain I think that's a lot on our side for him actually staying because it's what is it three months since he got all the shit in the world for coming out and saying this means more to us yeah that's the, the, those they're not just empty words when he was backing up what the slogan means they're not empty words from him he actually means that he, he does but then the, the stuff on the other side is really Madrid tempting is really as, nice. as, as well. And so I think he's, he's he's probably looking at it and thinking, well, if I stay, brilliant. But th- there's this if there is a possibility, and we're all assuming that there is a possibility, by the way, and maybe, you know, how hard the Madrid pushing, I, I, I don't know. You know, they've, they've obviously just done a huge outlay on, on, on Kylian Mbappe. And so what have they got, you know, the, 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 the money for, you know... To, the link to other footballers as well. Yeah, like exactly. Yaro, Lads, etc., yeah, etc. exactly. And so but there's... There was talk in the commentary on Saturday night that this season is their season for rebuilding the front line. Yeah. And then the beginning of next season, they'll start looking at full Well, well they could be in his ear about, about running down his contract, could and and, and and them signing for free, free next summer and, uh, and big money there. <laughs> I don't know. I think I think he's in. He's obviously in a fantastic position. You know, we we've we've put a few more cards in his hand. Unfortunately, we're, we're not sort of sorting it sooner, and so it's a slightly more difficult one. I feel, you know, and, and listen, we're all just guessing, aren't we? But but I feel like the, if if the if they push hard enough, they can make it happen, and, and that's what I I want to see the club see. You know, yeah, he's, he can go anywhere in the world he wants, but as you rightly point out, Ian. You know what a what a future potentially at Liverpool as well, and, and in terms of you know what he can do, and 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 you know we all think that the Liverpool are going to be competing for trophies, you know, in, in in coming years as well, and so I think if they push, I think if they show him the money, and I think if the if the, if the, you know, if if they can get everything right, because for, for, you know it's it's not just financially. Obviously, it's 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 the ambition of the club. It's where they see him playing. There's there's a lot of factors around it, and it's a massive contract for him in terms of, you know, the, the next you know where where am I going to be playing football for the, for the next effectively four years? Would you would you say? And so, it is big. I'll, I'll be punching the air tops off if they do it. To be honest with you, because four he's, years it takes him till he's thirty, doesn't it? Uh, 29 ish, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't quite work out when his birthday, I can't remember what his birthday is off the top of my head. Uh, they're all so that. young. They're all so, they are all so young, John. Uh, that is that is the truth of it. Uh, listen, uh, it's been an excellent time for your rap, setting up the intrigue of what is to come. Uh, at some sort of point, uh, Schlott will do some sort of press conference, but I think there's no rush. I'm quite relaxed about it. I mean, what's he going to say? <laughs> if you know what I mean. Yeah, no, this is exactly how I plan to play the 4 2 3 1. So speculate away, go from there. Uh, I mean, maybe he will. Uh, maybe, I mean, he's been very direct so far. He's not been one for secrets, <laughs> if we're all honest about it. So maybe that is indeed what his plan is. Yeah, you get a chalkboard out uh, and sort it all out. But we will see. Uh, that is all to come. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much to Beth, uh, to Ian, and, for, and John for doing this show. Uh, Jordan Singleton, who was uh, less than 90 minutes ago trapped in a lift, uh, he has made it out in order to produce the video. If you're on YouTube, uh, Andy Heaton on the audio, it's been the Anfield Wrap this week. See you later.